What has the recent war demonstrated about American and Western reaction to the Jews? Welcome to another edition of Prophetic Perspective. We're glad you're joining us today. I have, of course, Nathan Jones, our Internet Evangelist, and our special guest and good friend Olivier Melnick of Chosen People Ministries. Olivier, you've been here many times before to talk about anti-Semitism in general. Yes. Obviously, recently we talked about your book, Normalization of Anti-Semitism. But since the war has been underway in Israel, we're seeing throughout the West and even here in America a manifestation of a satanic hatred even by those who uh, perhaps were not as overt in their anti-Semitism previously. Yeah, I mean, this, this uh, war in, uh, in Israel uh, between Hamas and Israel, uh, basically now you're looking, every news outlet that you listen to, the word anti-Semitism is on their mouth, mm -hmm. is on their lips. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, the, the, be the beast has just been unleashed. I mean, it, I've never seen it. I've been, you know, I've been monitoring and, and teaching on this uh, for 23 years. I have never seen it so intense. Every single day we get new new incidents where people go into homes or you've heard about the one in, in the, the Russian uh, airport when they were running after Jews. Uh, it's, we're 2023, but we're back to 1930s. Yes. I saw in London a group of, uh, of pro-Palestinian protesters running through the streets and chanting, give us your Jews, we want their blood. I mean, this sounded like 1938 and the time of the Nazis coming to power and Kristallnacht. I just, it's horrifying in civilized portions of the West that these folks are, are raging and they're very, very radicalized. Well, remember then when the Holocaust took place uh, in the 30s and 40s, uh, it was at the hand of, of a very civilized uh, group of people. The mm. Germans were extremely cultured and civilized and so uh, it's, it's mankind, okay? Mm. It's humanity in general that is uh, corrupt. And, and, and you said it in, in your introduction, anti-Semitism is a creation of Satan. It is satanic, it is demonic, and until people understand that there is a satanic force behind anti-Semitism, they will not be able to properly understand it and fight it. Maybe it's interesting that seven million Jews live in Israel, seven million in the rest of the world, and you expect anti-Semitism, especially amongst the Islamic peoples in the Middle East. But here in the United States, you're like, well, hey, the United States and other Western nations accept the Jewish people. And then I read an article, California man breaks into Jewish family's home, threatens to kill them, yells, free Palestine. So he's going to murder a Jewish family living in California. We've got politicians like the Squad, who are openly in support of Hamas. We have professors at Harvard and student unions all across the United States chanting death to the Jews. It doesn't feel like America anymore. It doesn't feel like America. And, and you know, you thought you're uh, making a reference to the squad. Uh, Rashida Tlaib still has on a Twitter feed the, uh, the, 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 the tweet that she puts that the, the hospital in Gaza was bombed by Israel. She didn't take it out. It's still there. And it's been proven that it was not done by Israel, but it was a mishap in, uh, in, uh, you know, in one of the missiles that they sent. There's yeah, one of the missiles Hamas sent, so they Hamas fired sent. their own missile. Yeah, shot their right, own. which happens regularly. Yes. Uh, and so this, this uh, I don't recognize America. I came to America in 1985 as a French citizen, became an American, I, you know, and this is not the America I came to. It, this, this country is, is going down the drain. Uh, uh, you know, and, and here's the thing, you know, I've, I've been saying this for a while now, there's no, no safe place for Jews, especially in Europe. You know, I come from France, France is really bad, but no safe place for Jews anywhere in the world except for Israel. And right now, Jews are not even sure that this is a safe place. You know, speaking of France and Europe, it was France where there was a trial of a Jewish uh, army officer named Dreyfus and Theodore Herzl came as a newspaper reporter to report on that trial. And Dreyfus was falsely accused with treason. And yet what Herzl saw and perceived was not just that the trial was stacked against this Jewish officer, but that the people throughout Paris and France in general had a, a vehement hatred for Jews in general just because of the false accusation against one man. Right. It was later disproven. Right. But Herzl realized if we can't live in places like Paris, France, or in other parts of Europe, then where can we live? And it motivated Herzl to recognize we need to find our own homeland, a Jewish homeland. And so really it sprouted the cause of Zionism. And yet once again, I think in the West in general, and even here in the United States, Jews are coming to realize, you know, scratch the surface. And again, there's this 
vehement anti-Semitism that's manifesting itself, and some of them are recognizing they're going to hate us here or there or everywhere unless we go home to Israel. Have I, you heard that sentiment? Yes, I, I think Israel is still the safest place for Jews to be uh, today. I mean, uh, they, they are going to take care of, of what's happening in, in, in the Gaza Strip. They, they are going to eradicate Hamas. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it. Uh, they, they have no other choice. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, uh, it was Golda Meir, I believe, who was asked, uh, uh, she was asked uh, years ago, uh, and then she, was to, she, she answered, she said, we have a secret weapon. And our secret weapon is we have nowhere else to go. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, so the Israel is the only place for Jews to go. And we're going back to Herzl. Uh, uh, it's interesting you mentioned him because you know when he when you wrote that little uh, pamphlet called the Judenstaat, the Jewish State, in uh, eighteen uh, was it uh, eighteen ninety seven, I believe, Maybe. and he published it eighteen ninety seven. And he said in it, and, and I have the, the direct quote somewhere that in five years or maybe fifty years uh, this will happen. I put 1897 plus 50 is 1947, and November 27, 1947 is when the United Nations voted for the partitioning of uh, British mended Palestine. So, he, he, in a sense, he spoke prophetically, and we have now the, you know, of course, May, May 14, 1948, the birth of Israel. Uh, it is the safest place for Jews to be. Uh, right now, it doesn't feel safe, but um, we also have to recognize that. Uh, uh, and, and, and the proof of, of it is today, right now, Israel still has friends in, in the Christian community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and there are a lot of Christian churches, a lot of Christian ministries that actually are uh, looking for ways to yeah. help Jewish people. It's not enemies everywhere. Well, where is this going prophetically? As This is called prophetic perspectives. Where do you see all this anti-Semitism leading the Jewish people from a prophetic point of view? Well, uh, the Jewish people, according to, uh, you know, if you look at uh, um, Ezekiel, uh, they are going back to the land. Okay, and the fulfillment of chapter yeah, 36 and 37. Right, 36 and 37, yeah. going back to the land in unbelief. And this has happened, we can say, it actually started before 1948, the late 1800s, you know, the, they were called aliyahs or aliyot, the, the, going the, up. the going up, the return. So they started before the creation of the state of Israel. And uh, they, uh, they're going back to the land of unbelief. The, the dry bones, of course, that's going to be the regeneration when they're, uh, where they're in the land. Uh, I believe that the Jews are going to go back to the land. Uh, I, I know that's what the Bible tells us. And eventually at some point, you know, we, we've discussed that before, there's going to be a terrible time of turmoil. We are looking at some difficult times right now, but it's going to get worse. It certainly it's going is. to get worse. And that's what we call the Great Tribulation or... What do we call it for the Jewish people? Time of I'm Jacob's Jacob. trouble. Time of Jacob's yeah. trouble, exactly. I think there's another Jeremiah prophetic 30. fulfillment that we've seen already pre-filled. We're seeing another wave of it now, and we will see a fulfillment in the fullness of time. You mentioned 1947. So why did the United Nations vote overwhelmingly to support the, the creation of a Jewish state? Because the West felt guilty of what had been allowed to happen in the Holocaust. And so for a brief window of time, the West was rallied to support Israel. Tragically, uh, certain nations like Great Britain refused to vote. They, uh, they took the, the coward's way out and abstained. But overwhelming support for Israel. What did we see right after October 7th this year? Overwhelming support for Israel because many of the civilized nations of the West realize this is a horror, this is a, a, an attack on Israel's sovereignty. We cannot uh, endorse terrorism, and so we have to stand with Israel. That will last for a period of time, and then the fickle sentiment of the West, even of the so-called Christian nations, yes. will wane, and they will once again abandon Israel, say you need to divide the land, they'll support a two-state solution just like Joe Biden is that won't already. La that won't last very long. It, 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 no, their no. support will not last long, but it's going to be yet another cycle. And I think in the fullness of time, prophetic scripture tells us all the nations of the world will come against Israel. So this cycle is going to continue until the end of times when all the nations are against Israel and Israel turns to the only real protection they have, which is God Almighty, and they will recognize Him right. as their salvation. Well, we were talking about that uh, before the show with uh, Nathan about that passage in uh, Zechariah 12 about, you know, the, uh, the, whole, the whole world is going to go against Israel. It looks like it's, it's leading in that direction right now. Now, it's interesting, uh, you know, the Holocaust, the, the, this, this uh, corporate guilt that people had and they wanted to help Israel, you know, and the, 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 this whole uh, idea that Israel, Israel was born out of the ashes of the Holocaust, which is Personally, I think it's partially true, but that's, it's more 
complicated than that. Mm -hmm. But there was an article in The Atlantic a few years ago, and I forgot the, the guy who wrote it, but it's something that I always remember. He said, the inoculation of the Holocaust mm. has worn off. Oh, yes. yes. And think about it. We are now at a place where people, uh, people don't remember the Holocaust. You ask Gen Z and, and, and young people, they don't even know what it is. They don't know how, how many Jews died. They can't name a camp. They, uh, or they've been they, indoctrinated to deny it's, uh, right. that it ever happened in the first place. So, so we, we see this, this is why we have so many uh, young Americans on, on college campuses uh, rooting for you know, free Palestine. They don't even know what they're saying. No, they they have no idea what they're saying. The you, thing you, is a Palestine. And when, and when you see people cornering them to ask him questions about can you tell me why you're saying that they just kind of they laugh they walk away they don't know they can't they articulate know. what they're saying they're just saying it because it's cool and it looks like it's the poor victim that we need to be uh, rooting for mm. well the bible says in psalm 121 for behold he god who keeps israel he keeps israel shall neither slumber nor sleep so we know israel is under god's protection yes. The Archangel Michael himself is the guardian of Israel. But what can we do, Olivier, to help the Jewish people in their time of difficulty now? Well, uh, there's a, obviously there's many, many good, uh, good ways you can uh, help Israel, you know, make you know, you know, uh, donations uh, to different ministries, including Chosen People Ministries. I also believe that we are at a place in our history right now, and I know it's going to sound pretty dramatic, but I believe that, you know, I, when I was talking about in my book about the normalization of anti-Semitism, the last point on the nine is mass murder of Jews. And I told you last time I came, I said, all the nines are in place, but we haven't seen a, a, a desire or, or an, an action going towards the mass murder of Jews. Hello. Here we are. Here we are again. So I think um, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see Christian mobilizing together and, and understanding, okay, we might not be able to change how anti-Semitism is going forward. We might not be able to stop it, but we certainly can open our homes to help Jewish people, and we can uh, we can rescue them. We can do something uh, that the, the the opposite of what was done during the Holocaust, where Christians became bystanders and helped the perpetrators. They looked the other way, didn't want to get involved. It's time to get involved, stand up, and reach out to the Jewish community. So, Olivier, if our viewers wanted to get in touch with you personally to ask a question or to even offer support, how could they do that? Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, the, uh, the easiest way to get a hold of me is to email me with your question if you want to uh, reach out to the Jewish community and, and make a difference. Uh, Olivier Melnick for truth at gmail.com. Olivier Melnick for truth at gmail.com. And then I will... Uh, answer your email. I answer all my emails. Well, we know you do, and we have uh, actually coordinated before when someone reached out to us and we passed them on to you, and it was a Jewish person with a question, and they became a follower of Yeshua. Absolutely. Uh, a, a Messianic Jew at that point. That was Folks, awesome. I want to let you know that this year the Lord inspired us to share the six signs of the times in six different editions of our Lamplighter magazine. So at the end of the year, in November, December, we focused on the greatest sign of all, the sign of Israel. We had no idea what would transpire, but the Lord God did. So if you'd like to get a copy of this specific edition or of all six special editions from 2023 focusing on the signs of the times, just call the number on the screen. We'd be, light, be delighted to send it to you or to give you the, the six edition set or to sign you up for future editions of the Lamplighter. And we'll even send it to you for free if you just want the electronic copy. But Olivier, today, on behalf of Lamb and Lime Ministries and all of us who follow the Word of God, I want to grab a hold of you, brother, and just pray the Lord's blessing on you and by extension, all of our Jewish friends around the world. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom, shalom.